Apostle Femi Lazarus is a man raised by God to demonstrate his wisdom and authority to the last day church. He is the lead pastor of Sphere of Light Church and God told him years ago, that a time will come where my wisdom will be needed to navigate tough times in the body of Christ. Then I will cause your voice to be heard and all who pay attention to my word on your lips will not lack light and direction. He is a man sent from God, sent to raise God's end time armies. With Apostle Femi Lazarus, every minute counts as you listen attentively. Oh, we bless your holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Father, I ask that tonight there will be recovery of time. You will shrink time for us. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. And please, you may be seated. Thank you. Amen. All right. Um, We have a very long way to go tonight. And um, it will be a night you will not forget. I didn't hear amen to that. All right. So going straight, um, let's do Hebrews chapter number 12. Hebrews 12 um, from verse 16. Hebrews 12 um, from verse what? 16. Now, Hebrews 12 from verse 16 says, Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his better right. So I, I started the topic, the market called life. And um, I laid the foundation that life is a place of many transactions. Okay. Um, life is a place of transaction. Let me share a story with you that will help you um, understand well. I heard the story um, of a man, a very poor man, a very poor man, who one day sat outside his hut, and um, while he, his back was itching, he was rubbing the back against the wall and he noticed that there was a scratch and he began to bleed. So he looked closely and saw something that looked like a glass. Um, at closer inspection, they found out it was diamond. So he took it and went to sell it. And someone bought it for quite a price. And um, the fellow said, okay, instead of buying just this, I will buy your entire building. <laughs> For maybe the price of what you get a building in Lekki. The guy understanding that, if you can have one modeled up there, it is possible to have ten. True? And after a while, the guy came back and said, can you, can you show us where you got the soil that you used to mold this your heart the rest they say is history life is full of transactions our day to day living is a choice you don't have to study business administration to transact the choices you make every day is a transaction Um, everything you do so life itself is a market and I, I try to lay the foundation. Um, usually when, I think mostly in Yoruba culture, when someone dies, they say, ah, aye lodger. This, this world is a marketplace. Uh, heaven is the real house. Have you heard that before? 
Uh -huh. So I am not teaching this subject in respect to that. It is in respect to the transactions that takes place. So what we just read in Hebrews 12 verse 16 was the transaction of a man called what? Esau. It is not enough to have something. You must know the value. Anything um, that you have but refuse to recognize the value, you, you, you will sell it cheap. For instance, you can... It is possible to have parents and not know the value. I, I want us to take it slow. Sometimes we don't need depth. We just need clarity. Just, just understand it. Huh? Do you know? Let me, let me, let me pause a bit. Do you know most times we don't know the value of human relationships? What makes hell, hell, one of the component of hell, is the fact that it is a place where nobody has time for anybody. In hell, there's no bestie. Everybody is in pain. Look at the beauty of waking up in the morning and there's somebody to say good morning to. And there's somebody who is also saying good morning. I don't care if that fellow is your mate or your spouse. As long as there is a voice, it's a blessing. Sometimes we don't understand the value of things as... Um, Sometimes maybe things as we call it simple, like the church. Uh -huh. Is the church valuable? But most of us we don't understand the value. A day is coming that all the church doors will be shut. Because there will be no need anymore. We would have been gone with Christ. The only thing that will be trending on social media is rapture. And those who specialize in trying to look for trouble for us will miss us. Because the moment the church is out of here, everything called good is out. The moment the church is raptured, the Bible said the Antichrist will be revealed. While we are still here, do we understand the value of what we have? Do you understand the value of your health? I showed you last week that in the market called life, sometimes you get to the market in the morning, something is cheap and it is plenty. You so say, I will get it later. You get there in the afternoon, it is still available, but scarce. The value has increased. And there comes a time that even for the highest amount of money you can offer, you can't find it anymore. I've had to speak with dozens of people in their final moment. In sick bed, somebody saying, I post who pray for somebody, this fellow has cancer. I think they understand the value of life more. They understand the value of being able to wake up again. All of you here are looking forward to December, one way or the other. Or somebody somewhere around the world has just received a letter today. That he or she just has two more weeks to live. Then time suddenly becomes valuable. In the market called life, when people don't understand what they have, they can be given quit notice. In the name that is above all names, your time will not be cut short. Amen. Okay, I, I'm getting used to your kind of amen. amen. But again, I'm, I'm, I'm decreeing over you, your time will not be cut short. Amen. You will not become the man that almost got there. Amen. Your time will not be cut short. Amen. Sometimes we wake up in the morning. And we don't even say thank you, Jesus. You know why? We don't understand the value. Let's assume 
woman of God, I'm going to give you 350 million naira now. How much? 350 million. Do you like it? Everybody likes it. <laughs> but on one condition, you won't wake up tomorrow morning. Huh? You don't want. How about you? With all the, all the things you've been through in life, just enjoy tonight. You don't want. My friend. 350 million naira. Okay, 350 million dollars. You don't want. 350 million pounds. Huh? You don't. Are you, who is thinking about it? Let me think. Um, let me be sure. <laughs> Even somebody who wants to commit suicide is checking the expiry date of sniper. You see? <laughs> this life, no balance, right? <laughs> What that simply means is that waking up tomorrow is more valuable than any amount of money anyone can give you. The most expensive commodity in the market called life is time. And I'm going to be dealing with the issue of time today. Time. What is the devil after? Is after your time. Uh, and uh, and we, we need to pay attention because it's dicey. It's dicey. Have you heard the statement that time is money? How true is that? Huh? How true is that? Is time money? Huh? Is time really money? <laughs> <laughs> it is actually but it is not for everyone there has to be investment in your time for it to be convertible if there is no meaningful investment in your time it is as good as time just the passage of moment a fragment of eternity I need you to put that scripture back for me on the screen Hebrews chapter number 12 verse 16. It says, lest there be any fornicator or profane person as who he saw, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Let's look at verse 17 now. For ye know how that afterward when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance. Though he sought it carefully. With what? Tears. One moment the thing was plenty. One moment he was the happening guy. One moment Esau was the next in line. At the God of Abraham. At the God of Isaac. Then the God of Esau. Another moment, it was the God of Jacob. And the Bible said, he, he sought it carefully with tears. Why do we wait for things to be gone before we understand the value? Why do children wait for their parents to die before they know they are important? Why? Why do we, why, why do we wait for things to be lost totally? Before we wake up. Do you understand the value of what you have? Do you understand the value of the season you are in life? If you are a young person here, are you aware you will not have the season of your youth twice in life? Let me describe time. Let's, if we say, please come sir. If we say time, um, walk from that TV towards me. If we say time is, um, please come, yeah, the passage of moment. So this is something passing that will never pass again. You will never have 6.49 p.m. May 15, 2024, twice in a lifetime. You will never. 
So you must understand when the Bible, when God said in Joel that, please come again, that although time is a passage of moment that is irreversible and irrecoverable past, he said, but I will restore the years. He said, I will. The only commodity that can bring back lost time is mercy. He can. If there's anyone here whose time has been wasted, there is a restoration. Yeah. And maybe the person is not here, but I decree there is a restoration. Yeah. Do, thank you, sir. You know what he said? He didn't just say, I will restore your years. He said, I will restore the years that the locust has eaten. What? The canker worms, the caterpillar, the palmer worms, my great army, which I sent among you. How does time get restored? Here you are, spent seven years wasting your life around someone, hoping it will lead to marriage. The fellow promised marriage a few months to eat, he broke your heart and left. Can you get that time back? No. But there is a God who will bring a man. And in his mercy, all the investment of the seven years can be invested in a month. Don't sit back mourning the time that is lost. That's another wastage. Cry to the one who can restore it. Don't sit back mourning and say, look at my life, look at... No, 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 no. Cry to the one who has the capacity to what? Are you following what I'm saying here? I mean, if Joshua can stand and say, let the sun stand still over Ajalon. I've seen unnecessary arguments. Uh, the sun did not stand still. The head stopped rotating. All that matters was there was a pause. Uh, there was a pause. But the Bible said the sun stood still. There was a pause. Okay? If time can be paused, it can be rewinded. You can miss an opportunity 10 years ago under the economy of God's mercy. Bring back the same opportunity and say now that you have learned, it is presented to you now. You see, the limitation of our very existence is that we can only interact with one time at a time. Let me explain what that means. All that you know is now. Yesterday is a memory. Tomorrow is what you are hoping for. So you are, limit, you are limited in the sense that the framework of your scope is to try use the experience of yesterday to redeem today so that tomorrow can be intact. But there is a God who is in tomorrow as much as you are in today. Do you know what it means for a God to live outside time? Somebody is trusting God. Let's say for a future partner. Said, I have to get to work. I have to get to work. God who is so rich in mercy and wisdom. The car is bad. The driver forgot to repair it. And God intentionally did not tell him to repair it. Neither did he quicken the guy. The following morning he's driving the car. And the boss is inside. The car breaks down. The boss is ranting beside the road. A very good young man comes down. And says, how can I help you? See how God manages events. What you call disappointment is a way of him bringing time back. Yeah. You will not miss God. Amen. You will not miss God. Amen. I'd like to beg you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, pay attention to all that God has given to you now. Don't wait for things to be lost before you understand their value. The very bread that you breathe, do you know the value do you know how much it is for someone to get one kidney right now in Malaysia? And yet you wake up in the morning and look at yourself and say, I'm so poor. 
The Bible even said, if a man gains the whole world and loses his soul, what can he use for it? I mean, what's the value? You hear some things like people have sold their souls to the devil, um, whatever platform it is they join. I don't know their WhatsApp group. <laughs> Maybe somebody is singing now, sells his soul to the devil, um, the music will spread everywhere, but... At the end of the day, see, it is foolishness upon foolishness times foolishness plus foolishness. The devil doesn't have anything to give. He doesn't have. He's not a manufacturer. You need to know what you have in Christ. He doesn't have anything to give. Somebody goes to a man. And say, I, 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 want to, I want to get ritual. I, I'm tired of the way my life is. I'm too poor. Um, the man said, okay, okay, okay. We'll do this. And we'll get the money. Um, but you'll only have 14 years to spend it. The money the abalist will give the guy will never put him on full list. Have you seen anyone that gets to full list through ritual? Even the gods are not that smart. Somebody went to do ritual and now he's part. I mean, forget about that now. But time. Why time as an exchange? Why time? Why the length of his days? The fellow that can wake up with one breath from the Lord. One breath of idea. That will be worth billions of dollars. There is a spirit in man. The inspiration of the almighty give it him understanding. The devil knows he has access to the biggest portal in the world, but he will not use it. And he has conditions on this money they, has give, they have given to him now. This is the condition. He cannot even enjoy his life. <laughs> he can't enjoy his life. He can't sleep well at night. He can buy a good bed, but no sleep. At night, they wonder why he's playing video game and pressing phone. He knows those that will beat him to pieces in his sleep. He has transacted, but he has exchanged something of big value for something of lesser value. You know, when you, when you don't have something, you think it is the most important thing. Till you get it and see that this is nothing even change. If I give you 100 million there right now, nothing change. But I say, no, no, I post to something will change. <laughs> say, you are the one that is talking, something will change. <laughs> But in all honesty, your ears won't go bigger. Your nose won't get maybe flatter or longer. It's still the same. Lift your right hand. Say, I have all that pertains to life and godliness. Say it again. I have all that pertains to life and godliness. Say it last time. I have all that pertains to life and godliness. The devil came to Jesus in Luke chapter number 4. He said to Jesus, this is transaction taking place. He said, I mean, you, you look at the, the temptations of the devil and Jesus, you are hungry. That what kind of insult? But no, he was not being insulting. He's just being the devil. He said, I want you to look at the riches of the glory of this world. He said, everything in it I will give to you. All you have to do is to bow. You think what the devil is saying to Jesus is to bow in terms of paying homage? No. What you bow to is what will make your number one. When you bow to money, you make money your number one pursuit. When you bow to the riches of this world, you make it your number one pursuit. And guess what? Those who pursue it don't really get it. When we follow first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, the Bible says what? All other things. Have you seen people, you have classmates that you ask them, what are you saying? I'm hustling. What are you doing? I'm hustling. No. The race is not to the swift. He said, I want you to bow. I will give them to you. And look at what the devil said. He said, for it has been delivered to me. So when Adam preferred to rebel against God, he transacted. Let me tell you something. I want to show you something, and this is where I'm going today. What we call time, Pastor Henry, come, Pastor Lee, come, come, um, Pastor Joseph, come. What we call time, please join your hands together, the three of you. I give a lot of illustrations. 
Um, in mathematics, there's something we call number line. Okay? Um, you have the positive integers, you have the negative integers. So let's assume this is a flow of time from one moment to the other. Can I have like five more men here? Thank you. From one moment to the other. All right? So join your hands. Thank you so much. No, you can still join. Now, this is flow of moment. Can you spread out? Everyone alive has something like this. The day a man dies, this is. Your time will not end abruptly. So there is time. 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., flow of moment. This is what we understand to be time. What is time now? This is um, 7 p.m. But that is not all that God sees as time. In this flow of moment, there is something called Kairos. Kairos is the moment that God has appointed for certain event to take place. That is, this guy has 6 p.m., um, 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m., 9 a.m. In between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m., God has appointed that something that will change the rest of his life will happen at this time. This does not qualify to just be called a moment. It is a contact point in destiny. When the devil sees that there is a kairos that God has ordained for certain things to take place in a man's life, the devil doesn't find your kairos on the day of the kairos. No. He fights your kairos before it comes. So that the man who will meet that appointed time is not the man prepared for it. So when the Bible says that Esau sought for his birthright, he could not find it. What the devil only insisted was that the man who will speak with Jacob that day is a man who didn't know the value. Let me tell you something. The most dangerous time to waste is the time you call insignificant. Any time that it looks like no activity is taking place, it was actually given to you to prepare for the one that a major activity will take place. Somebody has finished university the moment before service. Somebody has finished service. Say, I'm looking for a job. What is the moment? Somebody say, I've gotten the job now. I want to marry. That moment now. You see, it's just like time. Whenever you look like time is passing and nothing is taking place, don't call it delay. Call it preparation time. So we all have this moment. And the Bible says, look at this. God makes all things beautiful in its time. In the moment of your life, there are times that stands out. The devil doesn't fight you on the day of the fight. He just makes sure it is a weak man that will enter the ring. He doesn't fight you on the day of the fight. He just tries to make sure that the one who will get into the ring is what? A weak man. Let me tell you something. Have you seen cases? We will need to pause and pray at some point. Have you seen cases? And you need to understand, it is not just God that has Kairos. Everything that there is a divine part, there is also a demonic part. Mean, are you following what I'm saying here? Have you seen, I think I shared a story. This happened somewhere in the West. It's not a story I'm excited about, but it fits to what I want to describe. A man was walking in his place of work. And he just suddenly felt like um, I need to step out. And he, he, I mean, he entered his car, plugged in his earpiece, and drove out. But he noticed that the road was clear. But he had plugged his earphone. People were calling his name and waving, stop, stop. They are rubbing in front, but he didn't hear. Because the force that pushed him out also made him interested in the music of that moment. And by the time he passed where they were robbing, the thieves were wondering, what level of defiance? You mean you dare to pass, you see the rest parking by the roadside, and they brought out gun and shot him on the head. And that was it. What was that thing that suddenly made a man go out at the exact time death was waiting? The man did not die the day he died. He died the day the Holy Ghost lacked the ability to say stop. You see, as far as we are concerned, please hold on. This is the limitation of our mind. Please come. Bend down. When this, no, bend down, bend down. No, stretch out your hands. Okay. 
bend down, stretch out your hands. You see, when this eats the ground, that is when you know it falls. Everyone already knows something is dropping when it is in the hair. There is a way a man is living his life. And the Bible says the end of a life that goes like that is dead. He is dead already. The moment has just not come. It will enter into a fullness of time where a man who lives with this kind of mentality, the end result is what? Death. What exactly am I doing that the consequence has not come? But I'm not aware yet. It is waiting for a fullness of time. May we transact well with the Holy Spirit that the time allotted for us will be spent in preparing for major seasons of, my, of our lives. Let me tell you something. People have said this like, um, um, if a man doesn't prepare well, um, he, he may not know when his time comes. It's a lie from the pit of hell. Whether you are prepared or not, when your time comes, you'll be announced. You can be announced as wise or foolish. No, it just matters what you have done before that time. It doesn't matter. When it is your time, it is your what? It is your time. It can be the time of a foolish man or the time of a wise man. Put your two hands on your head. Father, help me prepare. Help me. Help me. Let's see, look, hold up. Look up. When you understand what I have just described, I've just shown you the skeletal system of addiction. Addiction is that which comes upon a man to make sure there is no moment to prepare for Kairos. Addiction is like setting a system in motion to make sure every day he wakes up, sifts the time. It can be addiction to smartphones. Addiction to media. What is it that God has prepared for me ahead of the future that I'm transacting away? Because I don't understand the value of... If you know what is ahead of you, every moment you have will be spent in preparation. What about the opportunity God is giving to us now to pray? Somebody say, if you don't pray, when trouble comes, you pray. It's a lie from the pit of hell. Those who have not mastered prayer will not even pray to save their lives. Because they have not learned it. We have a golden opportunity in front of us now. That we can still sit down in a meeting and call Jesus. It is an opportunity that we don't know the value. There comes a time that a man's life becomes too complex. He can't even have time for church anymore. Now that we have the time. Can, I, can we cry in a moment? Help me. What is this thing that is stealing this important commodity? What is this thing that is robbing me of this time? What is the framework? What is the game plan of the devil? Thank you guys, please. What is the game plan? What exactly is happening? What exactly is happening? I know God has a plan. There is a preparation. There is something he intends to do with my life. Why is the devil fighting today? Please pray. You have a moment. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. You have a few more minutes. Please pray. Please pray. In Jesus mighty name we are praying. Now let me beg you, don't be quick to label any time as a waste. You see, the most crucial moment of your life at the moment you don't even have definitions for. Somebody lost a job. And there you are. Every morning you wake up and you are crying. Why can't I walk like the rest? Why am I not as busy as they are? What's going on with my life? I'm failing now. And God is looking at you and saying, Do you understand the golden moment I'm giving to you to prepare? You say, ah, I, I don't see. God is saying, I'm giving you this time to. You don't have an idea of what the future holds. You just want to do your life like, life like every other person. Prepare now. Sometimes there is a burden on your life to pray. You wonder, am I the only one? Why is there so much burden to pray? 
Why can't I just do life like the rest? And God is seeing. There is a build-up coming. This is death ahead. And God is preparing his own son, his own daughter, that you will build up yourselves on your most holy faith. That when you come, fa- when you are one decision away from the end of your life, you will be powerful enough to hear God's voice. Certain things takes alignment. Not just intervention. Alignment. Sometimes God wants to intervene, but he can't. Because he's dialing a, sw- a phone that they switched off. Is dialing the phone that they switched off. If I send you a message now, you have to be online to receive it. And it's training you. Walk in the spirit. There are signals. There are signals that you have to train your spirit to pick. Walk in the spirit now. Maximize the time and the opportunity. Pray. In the name that is above all names, your time will not be wasted. Your time will not be wasted. Your time will not be wasted. Let me say this in a moment. Can we cry? Restore again the lost fire. I want to stay with you in the place of prayer. Restore the lost time. Kapoko pa ile nemo. Se ile kapambele kaya. Se ile mondeles. Seke Pradesh Lekabai Like a friend of mine Sivahandish Saika Palitish Seka Pai de Vrande Kepole Nibai Kaila Mam Bilikati Shente Kerosh Mm. You have one more minute. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Abara Hu Shai Kafalima Shete Kerosh. In Jesus' mighty name we're praying. Please be seated. May I tell you that the devil might be many things, but he's actually not a foolish man. He's very smart. Um, There is a Chinese proverb that know yourself and know your enemy. You will never lose a battle in your life. The devil doesn't just bring pressure. At careless moment. No. It brings pressure at the moment that something is at stake. Something I just want. I mean, somebody has been waiting and I, I believe this is a word for someone in particular. Somebody has been waiting one year, two years, three years, four years. About to enter the season where this is the breakthrough. Because you only see today, can't see tomorrow. Then the devil used the opportunity to bring intense pressure. Quarter to the time is still not the time. One minute to the time is still not the time. Two seconds to the time is still not the time. And the devil knows that. And it brings so much pressure. Look at what happened to Gehazi. He followed after the man called Naaman to collect the change of raiment. And Elisha said, is this the time? The time a man should be panting for double, double portion. That was the man he chose clothes. That was the time. You will not choose the wrong things. Are you aware that the people who married individuals who later stabbed them to death, there was an event they met and God did everything possible for them not to meet. Let me tell you something. You know today, you don't know tomorrow. Be quick. Don't be quick to call anything disappointment. Ah. Something can be very important now, but that's your ruin tomorrow. When God takes that of your life, you say, I have near success syndrome, but is it so? You can call favor failure because you don't know what time it is. You can look at what God calls favor now. Are you following what I'm saying? There are people roaming on the street. That anybody who will do anything with them, the person will crash. 
Let me tell you this. Let's assume somebody comes now and um, says, the money you are asking for, I want to give you. I sincerely want to give you. But I don't know why I'm not led to give you. So maybe you should go and pray. Maybe something is actually... You, you Imagine, no, you have a problem. This is your best friend telling you, I can transfer 50 million to your account now. Say, but I don't know why. The next meeting you attend, they call for those who have disfavor. Who is the first to come out? Say, I remember just yesterday. Now, two weeks after, EFCC is looking for that guy. And every account he transferred money to. Here they are watching them on channels TV. And they are calling their names, carrying the placard. <laughs> if you go back in time, will you call that in failure again or favor? I'm saying there are things you have wrongly accused God of because you don't know the time. There are things you have, you have looked at God and said, Hey, why, why have you done this? You have not known the time. In the name that is above all names, you will not make mistakes that will cost you your essence. You will not make mistakes that will cost you your essence. It is very important. You are limited. Accept it. You are what? Limited. Do what? You see, if we understand the way this world works, we will know that prayer is not part of our lifeline. It is the lifeline. Why would I not depend solely on the one that tomorrow is in his hands? What kind of audacity will make me wake up in a day and not consult him? What kind of audacity will make me decide to walk a life journey with a person and not ask the one, who knows who that person is tomorrow? I remember years back as a fellowship president, I started liking a sister. And I did not know I started liking the sister. You know, there's a way you can start like, but you don't know it is that you are liking the person. You just know that whenever this person is not in church, your message is not sound. All these pastors are born again from the womb. I can't ask them. But I've been there. I just noticed if this sister is not in church, I'm confused. So I was asking myself, what's wrong? And I was doing much. No, 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 no. It's just my passion for soul. <laughs> so finally I found out, okay, I like her. It was in the early days of to go. So after a while, I separated myself to fast and to seek the face of God. Should I go ahead? And the Lord, so I was praying. I remember I've been praying three days. No food, just water. Three days. And I had one of my friends, very big boy. Um, let me give you a bit of his story. This my friend, if he boils water, the water will burn. He's graced with something. It's called sleep. One time he said he was going to start taking people home lesson. He will give them work, he will sleep off. They will have to wake him, uncle, I finished. <laughs> so we only allow him cook whenever we want to eat burnt offering. That's when we allow him cook. But that sleep became a sleep we needed. Because he, he has another gift apart from the sleep. If he sleeps for what, five minutes... He can wake up with a solution to your entire problem. He has this gift of dream that is so accurate. So, the final night of the prayer, he was sleeping. Imagine somebody that said, let's pray together. And he was snoring so bad. I know I was on a flight a few days ago. It was like the devil really meant me. About six people around me were snoring. I said, my God. So he was snoring so bad. And around 4 a.m., I was there crying to God. I've been praying the prayer since I don't want to miss it in marriage. And I saw that my friend sitting down, looking at me. So I said, what happened? He said he had a dream. He said, while, we were while I was praying, he said in the dream, he saw me praying. We're supposed to be praying together. But he was seeing me in the dream. 
So he said in the dream, he said, I saw you praying. And I saw an old man came in from the door. And he said, he began to ask the old man, he said, your son has been praying for three days now. Then the man looked at him. He said, many of you are here because you don't have fathers to hold your hands. He said, that's not even but sir, he's been praying. And the old man looked at him and said to him, tell him, the girl he's praying about is a very good girl, but not a good woman. I've never had that in my life. So there are good boys who are bad men. There are good girls who are bad women. He's talking about the future. Let me share another story with you. Please listen attentively. This is well over 15 years ago. A sister walked up to me and said, I want you to agree with me in prayer. There is a curse that needs to be broken over my life. I said, really? He said, yes. He said, I agree with me in prayer. So I said, okay, let's pray. So we agreed, I think about seven days. We go and fast, let's trust God. Listen to my story very well. Within that seven days, it was as though the more, please pay attention, the more I fasted, the more there was pressure to ask her out. I didn't like anything about this sister before the fasting. How come now? The pressure was so intense. I'm telling you, this is a demonic one. I will show you why. That finally I, 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 I called her and I said, before I even die of this thing, let me talk. Give me a no at least, let me talk. But I was going to talk, the Holy Spirit said, hold on. And she looked at me. I was going to talk. If she did not say what she was going to say now, I would have talked. Then that was when she just looked at me and said, he said, Pastor. I said, yes. He said, will you believe that you are the first man of God ever in my life to join me in prayer about this thing and not ask me out? I said, what? I adjusted my clothes like a superman. I'm different. I am I'm different. I no, no, no. Not all men of God are like that. Some of us are just different. I was gone. Look at the moment. Patience for one minute. It was that night that the thing broke. I would have been in that trouble. You see, when God wants to help a man, he creates a system that will engineer his time. When the devil wants to destroy a man, he creates a system that will engineer his time. The bargain is for crucial moment. Why is the devil doing what he's doing now? Say, eh, I've been, I mean, battling with this. No consequence. I know God is going to use me. But I've been struggling with this sin. Me and this girl, we just can't get our hands off each other. You see, nothing may seem to be happening. Happening, It may look like nothing is happening yet. But something is happening. You are being weakened as against the day that what needs to respond is a strong man. All this little puncturing of... Are you feeling I'm seeing a puncture? When the devil wants to, he punctures the man. Bit by bit, virtue is leaking. The man is going everywhere, he's leaking. The day Delilah took off the hair of Samson was not the day Samson fell. No. There was a day, a day Samson was with a prostitute. And the Philistines gathered. They, called, they say Samson, the Philistines are here. He got up. And he removed the gates and the post of the city. Put it on his shoulders and climbed the mountain. Let me tell you this. You're already down if you use power to answer the question of consecration. They say, do you know you are living in sin? They say, but I'm still anointed. You are down. Do you know you are betraying God's plan for your life? Say, no, no, no. But something is there. The last time when I gave prophecy, it was so accurate. Anointing is not a sign that you are accurate. It is a sign that there was a time you were there. It is not a time that you are still there. You will not lose your oil. Amen. 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 You will not lose your oil. 
I want to show you something. In dealing with life, in all honesty, some moments are more important than the other. Somebody said the word man is an acronym of three different words. M for morning, A for afternoon, and N for night. M for what? Those are the three seasons of your life. The morning face. That's the face of beauty. That's the face of dreaming. That's the face of color. That's the phase where you are permitted legally to want to be everything. When you see children, you ask them today, what do you want to be in the future? I say, I want to be a pilot. Tomorrow, what do you want to be? I want to be a doctor. Next tomorrow, I want to be a policeman. The following day, I want to be an engineer. They are permitted because that's the morning phase. It is legal to keep dreaming. But if you spend the afternoon dreaming, you'll be poor. Because the afternoon face is the face to act out what you dreamt about in the morning. That's the face of work. And that's why it is said there's no free lunch. You can get free food at any season, not in the afternoon face. Many of you, pocket money ceased when you entered NYSC. That's to tell you you're on your own now. Am I correct now? For some of you, your own even ceased earlier. You were the one giving. Maybe from second, your afternoon started from secondary school. When the Bible said you should honor your father and your mother, it didn't say so that your life will be long. No. It said so that your day will be long. Your life can be long, but your day is short. Your day is the season that your light is shining, shining bright. A man's night can come at 25. If they tell a man you have two months to live, that is his night. There are people who are young, but their night has started. And there are those who are 80. They are still in their day. When you understand honor, your day is long. So there are, I remember while we were on campus, the things we started that some thought it was a joke. Let's do three days dry. They thought it was a joke. Let's gather together and study this Bible. It was a joke. One thing about seasons of preparation is that the character you build from there is what will sustain you in the future. It is very, if you notice you are seated here, you don't have a season that God brought you into a camp where you have been prepared. Cry to God. It is very important. Any manifestation you see without a notable preparation will be short-lived. There must be a season that God brought you in the midst of people. Maybe what you were doing is prayer. May I beg you that if you ever have the opportunity of God bringing you to a place where they pray, please pray. If God ever brings you to the midst of people who are fasting, please fast. If they ever announce in church and say we are going 21 days, please do it. If you have the privilege to join those who are praying, do what? Pray. Because a day is coming that all the investment of prayer you call waste of time, you begin to reap them. You begin to reap them. And, and I, it, it occurred to me, I, I saw people who thought the morning phase would last forever suddenly discover already it is afternoon. And many could not make it. Many are trapped in the character and in the lifestyle they built for themselves. Many are trapped. They get, you get to a point where you want to do, you don't even know what to do. No, no, no. You must come to a point of precise direction. Where you know with precision, this is what God will have me do with my life. You don't do anything that works. You do something and make it work. God did not ordain life for you to try just be hustling around and just maybe something will work. That is not a life of purpose. When you get the morning face right, you come out with precision. So by afternoon, you know what to do. By night, there is a roof over your head. I beg you. You see, I am, I am excited when I look at the number of people seated here. But beyond the excitement, 
Will somebody maximize what God is trying to do? There is something God is trying to do. But it is not composite that he will succeed. You say God is all powerful. He doesn't succeed always. He fails sometimes. Yes. There are people's lives that God tried to engineer for a purpose and he fails. He tries everything he can. And he can't get it to work. There is somebody here God has been trying to just pray one hour every day. God is still failing till now. Say, what about just do a day of fasting every week? He has not succeeded. Okay, what about we learn that you can, you can actually stop this thing you are watching every time that is destroying your spiritual life? Till date, he has not succeeded. But there comes a time that there is the cumulative effect of the transactions we are making. That here you are face to face with what you can become. But the man looking at it is not the kind of man that enters. You enter into a door that was designed for you and they say, no, not you. Because the version who saw the vision is not the version that will fulfill it. There must be preparation and years of aggressive addressing of yourself. Don't pity yourself in preparation. Allow God stretch you. Don't pity yourself. You can see it too. The Bible said Esau sought, he sought for his birthright with tears. For years. He sought for it. But we made the choices. We made the choices. One of the things the devil used to destroy people's future is anxiety. Anxiety is that irresistible urge to try to do things by your senses because it looks like God is too slow. That was what happened to Saul when Samuel, oh God, Samuel said to Saul, he said, go and sacrifice. He said, wait, wait for me. Wait, I'm coming to sacrifice. Wait for me. And Saul was observing. Look at the people. They are going. This one is going. This one is going. What's the business of Saul with who is going or who is staying? And the moment he sacrificed and did all those things, he was still on it. Then Samuel came. You know what Samuel said? Samuel said, it is today, today, that your kingdom would have been established forever. There will have been no need for a David anymore. It will have been the sure message of Saul. Today. He said, but now it has been taken from you and given to your neighbor. And when he held the garment of Samuel and he tore in his hands, he said, that is the exact way your kingdom will be turned away. Are you seeing how pressure of a moment can make a man miss God? God said, I've called you to ministry. You don't say, I want to make money first. Who told you that generational gates are opened all the time? Who told you that those God is killing you? See, let me tell you something. You have people that are your generational age mates. Those that God has designed that all of you are to begin to do certain things around the same time. Who told you that you will always be able to come back? You can kill with the next five generations because you missed your time. You will not miss your time. One moment, it is looking like it. One moment, don't you remember the number of people you had in secondary school that when they want to add drama and choreography, they look like the children that will become promising. We were used as devils for drama. Maybe for the shape of our head. But now God. Maybe you have even locked yourself and cried. And said look at these ones. Look at how promising their life is. And life begins to happen. And you begin to see everybody make different choices. And the man that looked like was heading there. Suddenly you can't find him again. There is a gate of generation. It doesn't remain open for life. It will open at a moment. It looks like you are the best. It looks like you are the only one who knows how to do it. May you maximize the season. 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 When that time comes, it looks like you are the best at what you are doing. But it is a season. No season lasts forever, whether good or bad. No season. No season. Go and check church history. You look at people like Pastor here at the way. You look at people like Reverend W.F. Kumui. You just notice there is something very similar about the timing. 
And at the same time, those who failed, they failed for the same thing around the same time. I showed you last week how that Jacob called Reuben. And called Reuben in the midst of his brethren and said, Reuben, my firstborn, the beginning of my might, my strength, the excellency of dignity. He said, but unstable as water. And what he gave him, he said, you will not excel. Why? He said, because you went into your father's couch and you defiled it. And while he was talking, Joseph was wondering. The same pressure came. It was not for my father's couch. It was for Potiphar's couch. The pressure you are feeling now is not for you alone. It is for those who are contesting for the mantle. Wherever they are all over the world, it is he that purged himself from this. May you survive in the secret place. May I announce to you, you look at yourself and say, why is this pressure that strong? No, you are not alone in it. The same affliction is accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Everyone who seems to be asking God, give me this mountain. He said, you must pass this test first. And you think, hey, I'm just in Lekki. I'm the only one facing this. No, no. You have a brother who is also in Kano. That if you come out, you will meet each other in destiny. But if you fail, you will watch him from afar. And you will know this is what I could have become. But I'm no longer the man for it. One of the most tragic things in life is to see people who are doing what you were designed to do. But you know you can't do it. There's nothing more painful than that. When you are telling your children's story, we started together. And they are asking, Daddy, what happened? Mommy, what changed? You will not tell the story of failures. You will not tell the stories of failures. You will not tell the stories of failures. May, may I beg us? There, there is something that is handed to us now. that we don't know the value. These gates don't open for life. No. I remember. You see. Ah. I remember when God said to me, he said, son, I know you have finished. You are not going to serve yet. Stay with me in the place of prayer. And I will wake up every blessed day. I was teaching first. And he said, resign. And I will carry my bag. And I will dress up. And go to a place where I will lock up the door from morning till night. And sometimes I will cry. He said, stay there. One year, two years. I went for service. I said, thank God, now it's the opportunity for me to go and use my life the way I want. Now I can go and get my job. I already got a job at Futa Health Center. He said, no, go back to the lay fair and finish what you started. I thought it was a joke. I was not released from that burden until after many years of finishing. I will wake up in the morning. I still spent five more years in obedience to that. That when I enter the midst of people and they are asking, what do you do for a living? This one say, okay, I'm working with this NGO. You, what do you do for a living? I work with a bank. You, what do you do for a living? I work with this. You, what do you do for a living? I can't tell them I pray for a living. You tell them you pray for a living. Even pastors will look at you as a failure. You mean at this young age. But it is God who knows what he's preparing you for. I remember I wake up every morning, hold the window of the house, and shake it and cry. I'm not a lazy man. Look at me and let me go. Look at my men. Look at them. But no. Except a grain of wheat first fall to the ground and dies. There is a death phase when they look at you and they say you are filled. The Bible says it abides alone. But when it falls and dies, it will spring forth again. And bring forth in sixties and hundreds. Nobody shoot an arrow forward. No, you first launch it back. If you look at it at that moment, you say this is a failing one. But when it is released, the more you stretch it, the farther it goes. You are not failing. God is stretching you. God is stretching you. But may you come out victorious in this season. Let me tell you something. When people fail in the secret place, it is not loud. It is years later that will tell that there was something God started where he did not see the light of the day. You can see those he started it together. May you, I beg you, go back to what God was doing. Go back to what God was doing. Go, it is already getting, are you aware? It's already getting fussy now. Foggy now, like, like, like spider webs is covering it. You no longer have a prayer complaint. Something is changing. You are no longer the same one. Your, think, your reasoning is changing. You are becoming bitter and sad. Life is happening to you. You were sharp, even without money. But when you were in the presence, go back. I sense to tell somebody the door is still opened. You can still catch up with the gate of that generation. You can. 
You can. You can. You can. When this door is shut, it is painful. I've heard some of the fathers talk to me sometimes. And while they are talking, they will say, ah, I will remember your maker. They say, but sin swept them away. What God started with you on campus, he was not flashing you. He was preparing you. Don't transact it away. It's not a flash. Lift your hands and say, Lord, before this door shuts, bring me back. Restore my lost fire. The clarity I once had. The sense of precision. The awareness that this is where we are going. Restore. Restore. I need to pray this prayer like your life depends on it. Take a moment. Restore. Restore. Restore my lost fire. Restore. What did he start? Where are you now? Where are you in the plan? What happened to the vision? What happened to what he said? Where is your prophecy note? When was the last time you opened it? When was the last time you were free to jot anything in it? When was the last time you had clarity? When was the last time you did something that you were sure this is God? When was the last time you functioned with a sense of precision? Is it getting to this? Guess what now? The remaining part of your life, you are still young. You can't get it back. You can. You can get it back. You can get it back. You can get it back. Cry your eyes out to the Lord. All to the horns of the altar. You sit in me. I don't care how much I'm making now. I recognize. If this is not the future you showed me, it is not. I don't care the opportunities I have. I can have you, Lord. I can get back to the words you said. I remember what you said on campus. I remember the prophecies that went ahead of me. I remember the things you said you will do with my life. I remember what you said. I might have made mistakes, but your mercy can restore lost times. Your mercy can restore. Oh, Lord, help me. Shake up the dust that has gathered on you for so long. Step out of the darkness of shame you have wrapped yourself in. There is hope for a tree that is cut down because at the scent of water it shall spring back to life again. Ego, you are a soldier in the army of God and the host awaits your response. To the clarion call. Lion roar. Eagles fly. It's in you. You were meant to fly. Lion roar. Eagles fly. It's in you, you were meant to fly, lion roar, eagles fly, it's in you, you were meant to fly, shake up the dust that has gathered on you for so long. Step out of the darkness of shame you have wrapped yourself in. There is hope for a tree that is cut down. Because at the scent of water, it shall spring back to life again. Igu, you are a soldier in the army of God. And the host awaits your response to the clarion call. There is a squad that is not complete until you get back. What the Lord started with you. There are 
are soldiers that are vulnerable until you get back to what the Lord started with you. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. gathered on you for so long. Step out of the darkness of shame. You have wrapped yourself in. There is hope for a tree that is cut down. Because at the scent of water it shall spring back to life again. Igu, you are a soldier in the army of God and the host awaits your response to the clarion. name we are praying sit down for a moment as I round up you see let me tell you this it is not because I have so much time that the Lord has said you must be here every week but I perceive strongly that there are people for whom time must be presented again and it must happen under the right atmosphere I sense, you know, since the first time I came here, that there is something God is doing here that has to do with time. That has to do with the restoration of time. You see, this is what the devil does. Let's say somebody has been praying. Praying for, let's say, 40 days. In the 40 days, you were able to maintain consistency and fervency. The day you stop for a week, within that week, the devil will try to make sure that you never have that 40 days again in your life. He understands the damage that happened. There are certain things in destiny we don't take break from. Some of you, it was three days break that go to four years, five years. Let me just quickly do this one. I will come back again. This is the seventh year. God is giving you another opportunity. Will you take it? He said, I will restore the years that the locusts eat. When locusts eat, you know why they are dangerous? As they are eating, they are defecating. He said, I will, it doesn't matter how irreversible the process is. It can reverse time. What is the worst thing? You had a bad marriage. Come off it. What's the worst thing? Who oh, have made mistakes? If only you know, I have, I have made certain mistakes I've aborted before. Okay, are you still alive? Yes. He renews that mercy every morning. Oh, I've made certain mistakes. I've gone off. Oh, you need to know what I've done. I got a girl pregnant. Now I even this. They sent me away from a church. Are you still alive? Are you still breathing? If yes, you are a candidate of mercy. You are. I perceive strongly. That there are people God is saying, let's go back to where we stopped. Now you don't look like it. Nobody will even believe that there was a time you were the most fireful intercessor. Are you aware of some of us are out there preaching from here to there? There are people God has given the burden. Say, this is your own assignment. Intercede for my servants. The moment the devil sees that God has placed something in your hands, he will fight you with personal battles to make sure that you look at that thing and say, let it just be there. He's not fighting you for anything. He's fighting for what God said you should do. The day you receive the assignment is the day your marriage began to go bad. When you know this is what the devil is fighting, enter warfare. Don't buckle. He wants you to give up and you are giving up. Is that those failure? He wants to attack your heart so that you can no longer perceive life right and you're exactly where he wants you to be. Are you not playing into his hands? You are transacting. You are transacting. The cutlass that used to be sharp now is so dull. 
You can't even believe there was a time it was cutting. It's sharpening you again. 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 The fire is coming again. It's sharpening you again. Everything that God started that stopped, it's time to bring them back. Sometimes one year of a break can look like 10 years because the devil will do many things fast. You give him a small chance, he will rush you with many, many things everywhere. Now you can't even, you can't find your way back to reading one chapter. When did you stop? Just now. You can't find your way back to opening the Bible. To open the Bible takes more work. I see what I know I'm dealing with something here. I want to give us another two minutes. What is the activity that stopped? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you. This is the way we pray this kind of prayer. If it is study life that stopped, while you are praying this prayer, open your Bible. Is that okay now? If it is the if it is your prayer life that stopped, while you are praying the prayer, put your hands on your head. I am back. If it is an intercession that stops, while you are doing it, put your hands on your head. The oil is back. If you were being prepared for ministry and suddenly it was aborted, come on, declare, I am back. I'm back. It is no longer business as usual. No. No. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. It is no longer business as usual. No! Lift your hands and declare I'm back. I am back. It is no longer business as usual. I am choosing my bargains right. My fire is back. My prayer altar is back. I am back as the man that God found. I am back. I am no longer distracted. No. I understand I'm now a mother. But I'm not allowed these children. Come between me and purpose. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. You have a minute more to pray that prayer. Shakata balakate shit. Shente kero go sente. Rende rogo sente rogo shit. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Abara o Abara o Shakata bara ko shit Rende ro go shit All over the world Your spirit 
is moving all over the world as the prophet said it should be all over the world there's a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea how can you walk when you don't know the ways of the wind how can you run when you don't know the ways of the spirit how can you fly when you don't know the ways of the spirit it's part walking it's bringing everything in obedience to God. He's bringing everything. He's bringing everything. In obedience. In obedience to Christ. Swallow your pride. Tonight. Come to the school of the spirit. Don't you know. In his hands. Is the key to eternal life. A little here. And lead to me until his will is done. Is that walking? He's bringing everything hey, in obedience to Christ. Amen. Amen. Please watch out for this pattern. The moment the devil sees that there is something in a thing for you, he will fight you with discouragement. Sometimes you just lose your zeal and interest for what you used to do. And you are not able to get it back. Sometimes when that thing happens, it's time to show you that you have to get back to fasting. Get back to prayer. You see, what we are doing here is to bring us back to the point that we are with God. Ah, it's not for fun. It's not for fun. I see God raising many vessels from here. I see God raising vessels, powerful intercessors, people who will through the power of prayer change narratives, people that God will use to alter realities. Are you aware there are mothers that that is the assignment? There is a mother who is not seeing the prophet, and God is saying, "What I want you to do is to focus on this child." Is it possible? Yes. You look at yourself as a mother and say, I have my career. Why is God saying focus on this child? Until the world sees that this kind needs to be painted under certain atmosphere of serious supervision and intensified prayer. When you are praying, the devil gives you the vibe. You are wasting time. But no prayer is a waste of time. There's a song we sing, calling upon the Lord, I'm not wasting time. Come on, louder. Calling upon the Lord, I'm not wasting time. As I'm calling upon the Lord, I'm not wasting time. Lift your hands, everyone, where you stand. If there's anyone here that certain things that God started in your life stopped for a while, you just got to the point where you became so blunt, you can't find the fire again. Maybe God has called for this gathering to restore back the fire. What about the mantle? oil upon your life. The grace to bring interpretation to scriptures. Why is it that till date, despite the way you look down yourself, when people see you, everyone wants to talk to you about their life. Could it be that there is something they are seeing that you are not seeing? Where did the fire go? The grace for prayer and intercession. Where did your voice go in singing? You are a minstrel. You used to bring down the presence. Where did it go? Where? 
fervency on the fire, the grace of evangelism. Where did it go? The burden for kingdom. You used to be creative. You see many things that can be done. Where is the fire? Well, I speak right now that there is restoration. I speak right now. And I, I want the ushers to please help me. And just help those under the anointing. And everyone under the sound of my voice. That something God started stopped. As I stretch my hands towards this house. Let the fire from the throne room. Together with the mantle you were once carrying. Take it back. That grace for prayer. Yes. Yes. It's back. It's, there, there's, there's someone here. The presence is back. That, now, don't, don't bother saying amen. That, that say, help him. Help him. Please help that person. That same presence. That glory. That cloud. That power. It's back. It's back. It's back. You are a prophetic vessel. There's nothing noble about your life. You are back. You are back. I'm seeing people being equipped again with the sword and the shield. Send them to get back in the battlefront. Get back to where you used to stand. You are back. You are back. You are back. It is not business as usual. The fire, the flaming sword of fire, and there to you from the very throne. It is back. It is back. It is back. You are not an abandoned project. You are not forgotten. God doesn't forget his investment. What well, is started on campus, he said, I'm back to take my investment. The wind might have blown. The rain has fallen. The dust has covered. But the altar is still there. And one day Jacob came and he found a stone and pillowed his head on it. And he saw a ladder let down from heaven with angels ascending and descending. And he said, the Lord is here. And I know it not. It is bad. That grace to talk tribulation, to counsel them and bring them out. You are a mother in Israel. There arose Deborah, a wife, a mother, and a prophetess. That grace is back. You have it. It is yours. When God placed it on your life, he was not flashing you. He placed that grace there for a reason. He placed the fire there for a reason. You are back to the secret place. I understand the pain is much. You are back to prayer. You are back to fasting. You are back to the world. You are back. While the wind and all the activities of life may present you as normal, but I make bold to say there is nothing normal about your existence. You are the continuation of, an, of a big project. God started something and he's still there. He's still there. The grace is there. The ability to carry and communicate the presence effectively. That everywhere you go, you will know when the Holy Ghost will sweep into your room and the anointing will come and you will cry. When was the last time it happened? The fire is back. We will not trade it away. No. No. There is a generation rising. Despite the influence and affluence, despite the blessings of the Lord, who say, I value the altar. I value the fire. And I'm back to the place of fervency. Shakata Balatesh. Shaide Mokopai. Sente Kero Siplate Keshta. Renekai, Santa Kabarande Kerusha. That floor is open again to begin to write down, write down, write down. There's a scribe amongst us, the anointing to write, to write down with inspiration. Where did it go? The fire is back. Search this person out with your fire. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, the fire is back. Just help her. grace. It's always been there. God is saying I've been waiting for such a time as this. I've been waiting. I've been waiting. Shake it from this. In Jesus name we're praying. Hear me now. If there's anyone here 
that the generation God is equipping you as part of seem to have gone ahead of you. He's giving you speed tonight. Yeah. Hear the voice of the Lord. You will catch up. Yeah. 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 In destiny, you will catch up. Yeah. No, you will not be an abandoned project. No. The investment is so rich, God cannot be joking. No, no. He has not called the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. No, no, no. No. I see giants. I see giants rising from here. I see giants. I see giants. Let me tell you something. Just help those under the anointing. God can release a grace on someone to bet the next technology that will open the world up in a new dimension. It can be an ordination to see what people are not seeing, to perceive in directions they are not seeing. It is a grace. It is a grace. Somebody said, maybe I sinned. I missed it. And it looked like something died in me. God said, I don't bury my wounded soldiers. I heal them. I heal them. I heal them. I don't bury my wounded soldiers. I heal them. I heal them. I heal them. I heal them. Grace. 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 The consciousness of your enlistment. The consciousness of your ordination. Grace. 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 Lift your hands, everyone. I prophesy and speak these words over you. You will begin to make the right moves back to the center of destiny. Nobody here under the sound of my voice will be left behind in Egypt. The one who made the heavens and the earth will see to it that you are not a failed project. Now, listen everybody. Let me tell you this. In Luke 4.18, Jesus picked the scroll to read. And I found the place where Isaiah wrote. And the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor, deliverance to the captives. Now, look at this. He announced the dimension of grace upon his life. The dimension of grace upon my life is to bring people out of Egypt. It is an Exodus ministry. That people who are trapped, who could not come out unless God raised a voice. And I'm telling you, none of you is permitted to be left behind. Are you, are you following what I'm saying here? There is somebody whose lives need this at this moment. That God can take away sleep and say you must respond. That is why we are here. When we come every week with backup of prayer and tears. If for one life, Lord. If for one destiny at a time. If for one person at a time. If for one individual at a time. That's why we are here. I beg you in the name of Jesus. Allow God finish what he has started. Allow him. In the name of Jesus. You will not fail God. I see a lot of impartations has taken place here tonight. Somebody is back. To where you used to be. In the name of Jesus. All that you thought was lost. Let me say this to you. God, our Father who is in heaven, doesn't keep malice. If any child will come back, his response is welcome. So never you come before the Lord and you are consumed with guilt that maybe I can't lift up holy hands. Do you know what I've done? He said to everything you have done, I paid the price. And part of the package is to make you strong. Unto him that is able to keep us from falling and present us spotless. Listen to what I'm saying. It's not going to make you perfect in a day. But his grace is sufficient for you. Ministering to you one day at a time. Are you following what I'm saying here? Strengthening you one day at a... One day at a time. You are in a meeting like this. The fire is burning in your heart. A few days again, you see yourself back to the same spot. You are not back there. You have shifted. Just keep holding on to God. Don't draw back and say, Ah, you see that? I'm just wasting my time. No. Line upon lines. Precept upon precept. Here a little and there a little. Is adding to you. Grace is released. In the name of Jesus. 
Nobody under the sound of my voice will fall on the wayside. It will keep you till the very end. Is your strength and sustainer. It will sustain you in the name of Jesus. It is done in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. The message you just listened to is sponsored by the friends and partners of Femi Lazarus Apostolic Ministries Ecumenical, Flame. To partner with Flame, kindly make use of these account details. 2215-005289-UBA.